Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and I'm that props girl and I am so keen to talk about this with you guys today. In my second video for this year when I was talking about the trends in 2023, I mentioned swings and understudies and I said I was going to do a totally different video on that topic. Today is that day. We're going to be talking about swings in the theatre and the importance of them and we're going to be discussing a little bit of backlash because if you watched my part two of my theatre reactions video I may have made some remarks about remarks that were made about um, a technical issue that happened in a show. I understand that it's frustrating. I get it. I do. I know you've paid money for this and you're expecting it to be perfect, but human error is inevitable in every industry. If you have never made a mistake, that's fine. But if you have, or something's ever gone wrong for you ever in your life, maybe remember that moment the next time you are at a show and there might be a show stop or a mishap happen. That's life. Suck it up, sweetheart. If you haven't watched that video, I got pretty brutal and honest, uh, so feel free to go check that out after this one. But this is a really important and timely topic in the industry and I wanted to talk about that. So if you are keen, stick around, uh, give this video a like if you did enjoy it and consider the hitting that subscribe button and bell because it really helps me to grow on the platform and keeps you informed whenever I upload a video. With all that said and done, let's jump straight into this discussion. So a common question is asked is, what's the difference between a swing and an understudy? There are actually also standbys and alternates. I'm not gonna discuss them today because the most common is a swing and an understudy. They get confused all the time. So an understudy usually just covers one role. Usually they understudy to one of the leading roles and that's just what they cover. A swing on the other hand can cover eight to 10 roles, they can cover two to three, They but they have multiple roles that they know. They might not be lead roles, they might cover several of the ensemble members, they might cover principal roles, but they also might cover the leads as well. Now in Six the Musical, uh, in the Australian production, and I know it's not the same whole worldwide because different productions are doing different things, but in the Australian production, the swings that we have typically cover any of the roles. That's a really big deal. Having to know six roles and six different sets of harmonies and all that sort of thing is a really big deal. And I have seen six, six times. I've seen all of the swings perform and they are all exceptional. And it's just incredible that they can keep every single track separated in their head, that they know exactly what's going on at any given time. And yeah, <laughs> They are superheroes and superhuman and I don't know how they managed to do it. Honestly, swings are some of the hardest working people in the theater. They do not get any rehearsals sometimes. They are often sat in the corner of a room and they just need to take notes and watch and learn basically. They don't often get to do a walkthrough or anything until either a show is opened, if we are talking Broadway and the professional world. Also, they might get a walkthrough on the day of performance if they're lucky. Uh, if they're covering a lead, they probably will get a walkthrough. But even then, it's in a lot of pressure to put on someone who's never been in that costume, done the role before, never said the lines, like worked with their fellow actors around them. They've never even been on the stage before. So if you're working on a, a show like Wicked, for example, the stage has got a lot of automation and all those sorts of things. And so not only are they dealing with where they have to stand, what they have to wear at each given time, as well as their lines, as well as the songs, as well as all of the dances in a musical, they also have to deal with the set coming in and when they have to exit and which way they have to exit, they have so much going on in their brains. It's insane. And the fact that they can be given like an hour's notice, two hours notice, even five hours notice, that's a huge amount of pressure to put on someone. And so it just blows my mind what they do and they are so underappreciated. It's not funny. So last year, early 2022, the Music Man on Broadway became a massive topic because Hugh Jackman made a curtain speech. But I have to tell you a little something you may not know. Yes, Kathy is the understudy for Sutton Foster. She's also what's known as a swing in our business. Now a swing, a swing covers up to 10 roles. So they will know and learn 10 roles. 
Kathy, when she turned up for work at 12 o'clock, could have played any of eight roles. Eight roles. <laughs> the leading lady. <laughs> At 12 noon today, and at one o'clock, she had her very first rehearsal as Marion. Where's Brian? I want Branch up here. I want Ryan up here. I want Daniel and Maria up here. This is what's unprecedented. It's not only happening here at the Winter Garden, but all over Broadway. This is a time we've never known. We're in our fourth preview. We're all just sort of learning. So swings and understudies have not had a chance to learn. They watch from the corner of a room while we rehearse, while we get to practice over and over again. They just get to watch and write notes. And then five hours before our performance, they're told, you're on. By the way, you've got a wig fitting. Go. <laughs> so all of these people here, the swings, and I'm emotional because it humbles me, the courage the brilliance, the dedication, the talent, the swings, the understudies, they are the bedrock of Broadway. It's just insane because sometimes they don't know on the day what's going to happen. They can just get a call and they've got to go. That speech really did change a lot of things in the industry and a lot of people started to recognize swings and it's it was a catalyst for change, which is great. Um, but I do think that swings are not appreciated and they're not talked about enough. It breaks my heart when people get disappointed when they see a swing because the first time I saw Wicked, um, I saw the swing for Elphaba and she was incredible. Honestly, she was. And my friends who I went with had seen the actual performer who, who did the role and they're like, oh, I'm so sad that you missed her. I'm like, I'm not because she was incredible and I didn't know any different. And obviously, you know, if you want to see a performer, a particular performer in a role sometimes it is like a little bit like no oh, I wish I could have seen them and you know if you can only afford to see the show once I get it I understand but at the same time they are working so hard and they're fighting an uphill battle not only everything we've discussed in terms of what they go through but also it's emotionally draining for them because you know they don't get a guaranteed show they they learn so much there's no guarantees they're going on the stage they don't get paid as well as everybody else in the cast uh they have to learn like 10 times the amount that everybody else has to learn they're expected to get it right first go with no rehearsal it's an insane amount of pressure on them their mental health is something that needs to be looked after and in general the mental health in the performing arts industry is something that needs to be addressed but particularly for swings, they need to be looked at uh, and looked after. Hugh Jackman hit the nail on the head when they said the amount of courage that these people need to go out on that stage because they also know the audience is expecting the lead. They're expecting perfection. They are also probably expecting this person to not be as good and to fail. And so to have that energy be in and around you to perform to that and potentially to have that energy of maybe even the cast who are like, oh, she's only had one rehearsal or no rehearsal. Let's see how this goes. That is so hard. It's so true. Hugh Jackman said that they are the bedrock of Broadway. They are the backbone of the entire theatre industry. And without them, the show cannot go on. There's another amazing YouTube channel which I found called Sam and Ryan and they were speaking about this issue as well and that whole thing of you know the show must go on it's very true but sometimes it shouldn't and I spoke about this in my first theatre reactions video that you know we need to actually normalize calling show stops we need to no normalize like those sorts of things but also it's not fair to set someone up for failure and you know it's amazing if that person succeeds and like you know the swing did an amazing job like that that's incredible and i'm not trying to detract like take away from their role they really are incredible but it's not fair that they don't get looked after it's not fair that they don't get rehearsed it's not fair that they don't have the same opportunities because they're doing so much more and sam and ryan really talked about how if they are the backbone of the industry, then there needs to actually be support for them. And this is one of the reasons why I actually am doing further study. I want to look into mental health within the performing arts and actually having arts therapists and therapists and psychology and all that sort of stuff that's in and around the arts industry. And yes, that sort of thing already exists, but it's so limited in what it can do. And 
the performing arts industry, I mentioned this in a previous video as well, like it, it has this awful thing of sometimes the audience just wants something from you and that can get really, really draining and everybody has off days and you get criticized if you get one thing wrong and it's just so draining to be part of this industry. We love it, but it's so hard. Sam and Ryan Orsha mentioned that like the danger of throwing someone in, you know, last minute and I did discuss um, previously about, you know, the technicalities and everything, but they had a great analogy that they talked about a sports team and how a sports team has like A league, B league, C league, whatever. But all those people, they rehearse, like they rehearse, they train with the team. They know the drills, they do all that sort of thing. And so why don't we have those sorts of things for swings? I don't know what the answer is there, but it's just, they don't get enough recognition. They don't get enough praise. And it's something that we need to start normalizing. It's a privilege to see theater in general, regardless of whoever is performing. And honestly, when I saw Jagged Little Pill, I saw it twice last year and I saw the understudy, maybe she was the swing for the lead and I also saw the lead and they were both incredible. Absolutely incredible. They performed the role differently, but both brilliant. And that's the thing. And when we start to say comments about, oh, I don't want to see that show because the understudy's on, or I don't want to see that show because the swing is on, you're taking away from that person's performance, which you don't know, it actually could be better than the actual lead. And maybe they were just given that role because they have a name and not because of their talent. I'm not saying that, that, that they're not talented. I'm not saying that at all, but names sell shows. And I know that this is not exactly what we're talking about, but um, especially with, you know, the pandemic and that sort of thing. And because, you know, we are starting to recognize sickness and the, like that whole show must go on mentality. I, before the pandemic, I did shows when I was at death's door. Like uh, when I did Strictly Ballroom, I was so sick and I should have been at home. I should have been in bed, but the show had to go on. There was nobody else to do my role backstage. And it is something that we are looking at as well in terms of actually like having swings backstage. I heard this great analogy, which is called crash uh, proofing your show. And so basically that means in the back t backstage term, and I, I taught someone this recently, is um, the notes that you take. So me as a assistant stage manager and a props person, if you guys watch my video on how I do my show track, uh, you'll sort of see what I'm talking about. But the notes that I make, they should be able to pass the bus crash test, which basically is if I get hit by a bus tomorrow and I can't come in and do the show, if I come down with a sickness, somebody else should be able to pick that up and roll with it. Now, obviously this is not the same thing as performing on a stage, um, but it's the same sort of theory. And it is something that we need to start normalizing. It's difficult because the performing arts industry got depleted. So many people left the industry during the pandemic and yes, we're starting to get people come back in, but we've lost a lot of skilled people. So having, you know, the breakdown of these things very clear for people to just pick up and roll with is extremely important. Uh, and I'm not saying anything against any of the people who are fresh to the industry and who have started. That is amazing. And like, you should be applauded. Like, thank you so much for joining us. Like we need you. We really need numbers, but at the same time, people who may not have the experience might not know quite how to do something. So for example, if I jumped onto a show which was just managing props, I might be able to cope a little bit better. But if I had to jump into a role I'd never done before backstage or a different department, I would not have the same. If you guys watch Vlogmas, there was a day where I was doing follow spotting for a show. Now, I have follow spotted before. I've done it multiple times. However, I had not done it in a very long time. So I was particularly nervous and it's these sorts of things with having adequate instructions, adequate notes, makes someone feel comfortable in that. And so again, it's this whole thing with swings. We need to actually make them feel welcome. We need to make them feel loved because can you imagine, you know, yes, getting the applause afterwards going, oh, you did it. That's amazing is incredible. But if we actually had a loving environment where that we welcome these people in going, Hey, 
it's so great that you're going on for them and actually making them feel like they're part of something that and like you know they're not on an uphill battle and that the audience was backing them and everybody was actually with them that would actually change maybe a little bit of the mental health side of being a swing i honestly have so much respect for anybody who is a swing in any show it is such a heroic and difficult job and so if you've ever been a swing or an understudy i applaud you it's a very difficult role to be in and you have to have so much in your head at once so congratulations on what you do you are amazing i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you learned something uh and give this video a like if you did and consider hitting that subscribe button and bell so that you don't miss any of my future uploads and i will see you guys next time Bye.